Latinos are the second largest voting bloc in the country, so their participation is pivotal in each election cycle. In fact, almost 12 million Latinos are expected to vote in the upcoming midterm elections this November, according to the NALEO Educational Fund. Understanding the voting bloc, however, has always been complicated. And up until recently, it's been believed that Latinos are shifting towards the Republican Party. But that may not be the case anymore. Here to discuss is Ferdinand Armandi, MSNBC political analyst and Democratic pollster, and Cristobal Alex, former senior advisor for the Biden campaign, former deputy White House cabinet secretary, MSNBC political analyst, and former president of the Latino Victory Project. Welcome to you both. So, Cristobal, I want to start with you. Abortion... Uh, is now sort of a, a big issue. It's a greater concern uh, for Latinos than it was in 2020, according to uh, a poll conducted by Unidos uh, and Mi Familia Vota. Given that, uh, what do what? Given that, what the poll is saying, what do you think Republicans and Democrats need to do to maintain Latino support right now? Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me. Great to be with you. Um, starting with that poll, what I would say is, for the first time ever, we're seeing abortion become a top five issue for Latinos. It's usually health care, it's jobs, the it's economy. Now you've got abortion coming in there after the Dobbs ruling. And this is a very important development. Uh, speaking as a father of two uh, beautiful little baby girls, one in four, it's shocking that they would wake up in a world uh, where their mom has more rights than they do. And that's outrageous. And that outrage is going to fuel a significant change in turnout this cycle. I think it's going to look a lot like you saw in Kansas, not just in Kansas, but across the country and with the Latino community as well. To this premise about Republicans making substantial inroads with Latinos, I push back on that. Mm -hmm. And if you don't mind, I'll share just a quick yeah. personal anecdote. My mom came from Mexico as a migrant farm worker, settled in El Paso. She was one of 10 uh, in her family. Um, and uh, if all of her brothers and sisters were alive today, 10 of them, seven would vote Democrat, and three would vote Republican. Maybe uh, on a bad day, six would vote mm -hmm. Democrat and four. Right. But that's about the percentage that George W. Bush got in 2004, which was a high watermark for Republicans. Remember, he got about 38 to 40 percent of the Latino vote. Right. That didn't signal any kind of substantial shift among Latinos. In fact, the next three election cycles, what you saw are more and more Latinos voting for Democrats and higher and higher turnout. So I'm not... Uh, uh, well, I am someone who worries a lot about everything, but I'm not too worried about some of these developments because if you look at the polling, um, some of the polls that people are relying on to say that Republicans are doing better, those are polls that have about 129 folks or 150 folks that they're polling. And, you know, that's not even a decent size quinceanera. Mm -hmm. If you look at the big major polls, uh, you're seeing, uh, again, uh, Latinos sticking with Democrats, sticking with the president, and that's for good reason. Remember, the president from day one was committed to Latinos. His very first uh, 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 day of the campaign, he rolled out a Spanish language TV ad. He was the first candidate to meet with the Hispanic caucus. His first meeting in Nevada was with Dreamers. Mm -hmm. um, he's been committed to that, and he made commitments to the Latino community in those meetings. He said, I want a diverse administration. I want an administration that reflects our country. And it does. For the first time ever, we've got a record four Latino cabinet members in this administration. They've had great success on the issues that matter most. They have uh, rebuilt the economy. We're at the lowest unemployment rate that we've ever been. Right. Um, they've cut health care costs with the Inflation Reduction Act. They've cut the gap in health care coverage. So time and time again, what you're seeing is Democrats led by the president stepping up for Latinos on the issues that matter most. And Republicans on the other side doing extreme things like attacking abortion rights, among others. So uh, that's a good contrast to be going into this uh, election cycle with. Yeah, I, I think, uh, Ferdinand, uh, on that point, in your polling, you found that, quote, uh, in the key states of Arizona, Nevada, and Pennsylvania, which have competitive gubernatorial and U.S. Senate races this year, Latinos favor keeping abortion legal by large margins, by 30 points in Arizona, 40 points in Nevada, and 41 points in Pennsylvania. Uh, can, you know, given what Cristobal has said, can you explain what this translates to when it comes to how the Latino um, community will put out or deliver its support this November uh, for the Democrats or the GOP? Michael, it basically translates into no bueno for the GOP. Like They've got some <laughs> problems based on these poll numbers because what I think more than anything, the abortion uh, decision by the court to overturn Roe versus Wade protections has done, Michael, is it has made this Republican extremism, uh, it's taken it from the theoretical 
to the in-your-face reality. And I think a lot of Hispanic voters, who, by the way, actually do have very conservative outlooks when it comes to the issue of abortion, uh, there are a significant degree that are against abortion, that would never do it under their own circumstances. But that doesn't mean that they want the government deciding what a woman and her family should do and their doctor when it comes to this. And that's why since that decision was announced or leaked in early May, we saw a significant shift with Hispanic voters, not just in these three states, but that is also happening nationally. And to Cristobal's point, Michael, the fantastic weeks that President Biden and the Democratic majority in Congress has had in starting to now deliver on these campaign promises on a host of issues, now reforms to Medicare, which has a huge impact for many older Hispanics, uh, the infrastructure bill, that's actually going to be something that leads to more job creation, economic opportunity. These wins and also gas prices plummeting over the last couple of weeks, we've now seen Biden's approval rating rise. And in the generic congressional ballot, you're seeing greater support for Democratic candidates. If I'm a Republican right now, I'm looking at these numbers and I'm very concerned because the mm -hmm. slight gains that they did indeed make in 2020 and in 2016 compared to the high water mark of what President Obama got at 71 percent, those are wiped out right now with one exception. My home state of Florida where, Michael, you know, everything's a little bit crazier, a little bit more weirder. But outside of Florida, the Hispanic vote nationally and in these key yeah. states is trending solidly back towards the Democrats. I, I, you can't presume anything about uh, voters, especially Hispanic and black voters who are very independent in their votes, that's for sure. Thank you both, gentlemen, Fernand Amande and Cristobal Alex. Appreciate you. Coming up, Mitch McConnell is sounding the alarm for Republicans ahead of the midterms. We'll dig into his quality of candidates comment in the next hour. Much more of The Sunday Show ahead.